Welcome to a DK Custom Products video. I'm Dwayne and this is Kevin. And this video may be a little unnerving for some of you guys, especially if you ride a train. So first things first, the guy riding was okay. Yep. He actually rode after the crash and he had some bumps and bruises, but he's perfectly fine. He is not hurt. And while we're at it, the video footage was provided by Ed, AKA Evermill. Mm -hmm. And uh, we thank him for that footage. Now, where, where were you when you were on this ride? We were in Arizona and we were riding. I was the bike, be the second bike behind the bike, the trike that crashed. Uh, and Ed was right in front of me. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were obviously on a twisty road. And um, it was pretty surprising to see what happened. So you were two bikes behind uh, the accident when it happened. And, you know, it, later on when we get to the footage, you can see Kevin pull up alongside the accident and check on the rider. Uh, but what was your first thought? Like, ha like what, what were you thinking? Oh, it looked, it looked horrible. <laughs> Yeah. You know, and, and it happened much slower. My remembrance of it was different than what I saw Understood, under yeah. the video with the video because it, it um, in my mind, it, everything just happened yeah. slower. And I wasn't the one, you know, a lot of people talk about when they're in an accident, everything goes into slow motion. I wasn't in it. I was just looking at it, but it seemed in slow motion. And, um, uh, but watching the video, it wasn't, didn't happen near as slowly you know, as it did uh, to my memory, but it was, you know, my first thought was, is he okay? You mm -hmm. know? And, um, uh, so, you know, that was the main concern. Is he okay? And fortunately he was, you know, he's had some strains and some bruises, but, um, it, he's, he was fine then. Like I said, he rode, uh, for about 30 minutes after, the accident he rode, but then the adrenaline started wearing off and, yeah. and we switched out and someone else rode it the rest of the way back. So the trike was ridden back to base camp. And, um, so that says something about a yeah. hurdle. Take a lick yeah. and keep on. Ticking. That's right. There's this, I think there's this unwritten rule. I think everybody watching will agree. Anytime you see somebody in an accident, whether it be a car or a motorcycle, the first thing you think is, is that person okay? The second thing you think is, what about the bike? Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, we'll put up some pictures here in a second. First thing, we're going to show the whole video at the end mm. in slow motion and then in regular speed. So stick with us until the end of this video to see that. Um, but here are some photos that we can look at of the damage that occurred to the bike. So this photo shows how scratched up the front of the fairing is or uh, the windshield and look at all the dents in that fender where you'll notice that the uh there's no right side mirror there's no left side um driving light that came out and uh so that's just the front of the bike then there's a close-up of the fender you can see how it's dented in that's the only thing that we had to do was that fender was dented in and pushing against the front tire so the front tire wouldn't roll. So we just pulled that front fender up and off of the tire and then started it up and rode it. <laughs> the handlebars were bent, but it went straight down the road. There's another view of the front fender. You can see how gnarled up it is. And then you can see the engine guard is bent and the uh, lower fairing is all scuffed up. There's another picture of the fairing. You can see the inner fairings broken and look at all those scratches. Yeah. Uh, it's safe to say not a painted portion of this bike is undamaged. Yeah. Look at that rear fender. Now, just a little side note, people go, oh, the, they're ABS. Oh, they're fiberglass. Well, the fenders are fiberglass. The, the actual trunk and the tour pack and the fairings, they're all ABS. You can see that the left side speaker, the whole part of the tour pack broke off holding the left side speaker. And look at the whole inner fairing got tweaked so much that the glass actually broke in the speedo and the odometer. 
Just from the photos, you can tell this was a gnarly accident. $18,000 worth of damage to the trike. That's on the initial estimate before they've even started taking it apart. It will probably grow from there. But um, he was wearing um, all of his gear, boots, gloves, leather jacket, uh, modular helmet, closed. Mm -hmm. So here you can see how, is this the front of his helmet, sort of like the front of the uh, a fairing, it just all scraped up. And obviously what he said is a mad, when he looked at that, he goes, that could have been my face if yeah. I wasn't wearing my helmet. That's a real wake up call for those of you, myself included, that likes to ride without a helmet. We rode, what, 1,500 miles around Sturgis and I didn't wear a helmet most of the time. But, you know, that right there just says, hey, that yeah. could have been your face. Yeah. 18,000 initial estimate on damage to the trike. He's fine. Uh, didn't even, um, didn't mess up any of his gear other than his helmet. So one of the biggest preconceived notions of trikes is that they're so much safer than a two-wheel bike. And in ways they can be, but in other ways they're not, obviously. So how did this happen? Well, um, and I've looked at, I've looked at the video probably at least a hundred times mm -hmm. and gone frame by frame to see what was going on. And we're going to, uh, cover that a little bit uh, in a few minutes and then we're going to do a whole video uh, that'll come out in the next couple weeks where we dissect exactly what we think happened here and what you can do uh, to uh, prevent this from happening while you're right. riding. Right, which I think will be particularly interesting to guys that may be new to trike riding because that easily could have happened to me. Like that easily. Could have mm -hmm. happened to me. You know, this this particular person had this accident. And before I get into it, anybody can have an accident. I don't care if you've been riding for 50 years. It can happen. And so if it can happen to this guy, it can happen to you. And it could, could have definitely happened to me. Yeah. I'm less than a novice on trikes. So in, in generalities, why did it happen? Well, first of all, let's talk about trikes are much safer. I have hundreds and hundreds of thousands, probably over a million miles riding motorcycles and trikes. I have, I, I added it up roughly um, yesterday thinking about this video and I have close to 150,000 miles riding Harley trikes. Mm -hmm. And so um, Har the Harley trikes are much, much safer. And I'll just let you know why. Number one, you're not gonna ever drop it because the foot gives way or the ground was too far away. If you hit some sand or gravel going around the corner, you're not going to low side like you would on a two wheel bike. If you hit a squirrel or a possum or a raccoon, you might be okay on a two wheel bike or you might go down. You're not going to go down yeah. on a trike. There's just, it's a much more relaxed ride and overall much safer, but there are things that are different um, about it. And one of the things is, is that when you ride aggressively, the you can lift one of your rear tires. And let's just look at this video that we made back a few years ago because I lift a rear tire all the time riding aggressively. So you can see in this video, uh, I have the body off. We had the body off because we were doing some things uh, that we wanted to show how the suspension worked and everything. Yeah. But you can see right here, I'm going around on a right hand, or I'm sorry, I'm going around on a left hand uh, curve, and you can see the inside left rear tire mm -hmm. lifting off the ground two to four inches. Right, and you're not even going fast. The Harleys have what's called a pan hard rod, mm -hmm. and when you lift the rear tire, you feel it lift to a certain point, and then there's a resistance against it lifting any further. If you do go past that point of resistance, mm -hmm. it's like all bets are off and you're probably or quite possibly going over. I've only gone past the point of no resistance, you know, around the five or yeah. six inch mark one time and it scared the crap out yeah. of me. I imagine it's not like looping a motorcycle when you're popping a wheelie. You go when too you, far back. You can feel you when you've gone ass. too far. Yeah. And I felt that I'd gone too far. And we'll talk about that incident 
when we do our uh, next video where we sort of dissect in yeah. detail what's going on. But you can lift the tires. The other thing I want to mention, this is a 2000, in this accident, it's a 2015 Triglide. That's right. So it did not have the RDRS. In 2019, 2020, Harley did a recall for the Triglides and uh, I think the freewheelers. And we'll put a link to that video up in the corner where their RDRS, um, uh, which is basically a nanny mm. control, was not operating ideally. This isn't that. What happened in this video that you're going to see in a few minutes is not from the RDRS because no. this bike didn't have RDRS. So do you think this is one particular thing that caused this accident or, you know, a lot of little things or just, you know, just the perfect storm? Yeah, I think it was just a confluence of many factors that just happened just wrong yeah okay um it was going downhill you always have less control going downhill than uphill it, it was obviously in a curve yeah you you know there's always more possibility of something going wrong in a curve but it was an off camber curve right so this was a downhill off camber curve the only thing, in my opinion, that could have been worse is instead of there being a mountain on the side that he went to, it would have been a cliff. Yeah, that would have been way worse. And then the other thing is, just the night before this, we were all, because there were like seven or eight of us there with trikes, and almost all of us were running a rear tire reversed or the Avon front mm -hmm. tire. But this particular bike is running the freewheeler low profile, so it doesn't have much of a sidewall, and the contact patch is not near as big. Now, I don't think that that is the cause of the issue, but there were bikes in front of him going faster than him. There were bikes behind him going faster than him, and none of them crashed. So... You have to wonder if the contact patch, the smaller contact patch on that tri-glide that was running the low-profile freewheeler front tire had something to do with it. Yeah. And Kevin's still in contact with the gentleman that had this accident. So if you have a particular question about him or if you have an idea of what went wrong and you would like to uh, confirm that with the gentleman that had the accident, leave us a comment below. So and we're going to... Uh, uh, Play this in slow motion and then regular speed. And then we'll have a video in a couple of weeks where we deconstruct everything uh, frame by frame of what we think happened yeah. and, and how we can all ride safer on our Harley trikes.